prepared to embark on a historical journey with this magnificent Viking longhouse build. A historically accurate base crafted to bring the authenticity of the Viking era into your art worlds today. Get ready as I guide you through every step to create your own Viking longhouse, featuring a central hub area, cosy bedding quarters, a space for livestock, and a sprinkle of additional extras to complete the experience. If you're relishing this build today, don't hold back, smash the like button and consider hitting subscribe. It's completely free and it supports me tremendously. Now without further ado, let's get on with today's video. Hello, bonjour, konnichiwa and welcome fellow survivors to today's build. Now before we start, I just wanted to say a massive thank you to all of you who have been liking, commenting and subscribing to my videos lately. We just hit 2,000 subscribers and I'm incredibly grateful for each and every one of you. Your requests flooded in after the last video and many of you asked for a Viking longhouse build. And I'll admit, I wasn't entirely sure what it was. So I dove into research, watching documentaries, burying myself into history books. And today, I'm here to bring you a historically accurate longhouse build. So I wanted a bit of grass for today's build, so I've come all the way over here to the green obelisk. On the map, we are here where my little green dot is. Latitude 67, longitude 74.6. It's a really nice area around here, but do be warned, there's a lot of T-Rexes and other carnivores, so just be prepared if you do want to build here yourself. But this build, honestly, you can build this anywhere. You can build it on a beach, on a cliff, wherever you want. Starting off today with the wooden foundation blocks, so we've, I've already placed one, so we're gonna, from there we're going to go one, two, three, four across, and now from the corner here we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, so there's one, two, three, four, five going across, and then we're just going to turn this into a box by following the same, so one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, and then that's five there. So that's our starting shape here. So from here, we wanna get the main building in. So this is going to be six by seven. So we wanna go out by one on this side and out by one on this side, and then fill these two in here. And that is one, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. And now we wanna go seven across. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Back to having six across, so two, three, four, five, six. And then just fill in this side, perfect. And then all you've got to do here is just fill in the middle. On this side, we're just continuing what we did on that side. So it's literally a carbon copy of that side. So we want a four by five. So if we go from here, one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four. And then from there, just go straight back towards the build, perfect. And this, guys, is your foundation this is the complete base this is how big the base is going to be and the good thing about this design is it is scalable if you want to go longer or bigger you absolutely can it's so easy to do so really good base this one and also i hopefully historically accurate i mean i didn't do my research for nothing so here we go i'm putting in the walls so we're using the inside walls guys so just make sure that when you're building this you want to use the inside wall not the app that's the outside wall we want to use the inside so this one So far, as you can see, a very easy and simple shape. We've only gone up by two walls all the way around, and now we're going to put the decking on either side. 
So for the decking, we're going to do one, two, three, four across, and then we're going to come out by one, two, three, four. Lovely jubbly, that looks great. And we're going to rinse and repeat on the other side, so it's literally the same. Just symmetrical on both sides, honestly. And the grass blade should disappear. Like so. Perfect. Now we're going to prepare the first part of the roof. So for the first part of the roof, we want to use the normal walls, going up by one. Then we're going to place a wood sloped wall on the left and right, and again at the very top. And while we're at it, we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. So now we can start putting in our roofing. Now it's up to you what type of roofing you use. You can use thatch or you can use wood. Both are historically accurate. I found out that they use both thatch and sometimes they used wood. Sometimes they even used tufts like grass for their roofing. So it really depended on where they were and what materials they had to hand. So over here, we do have quite a lot of trees, so maybe it would have been a wooden, or maybe it would have been thatch, who knows? But I'm going for thatch, I think it looks good. One little fact uh, about longhouses, they reflected social hierarchy. So the most prominent families and larger ones had more elaborate and longer longhouses, whereas the ones that were lower ranked would have had little dinky small ones. And in the longhouses, there would be one family, but it would be the whole family. So not just, you know, mum, dad and the kids. It would be brothers, sisters, their children, their children's children. It would be grandma, granddad, their brothers and sisters. It would be everyone in your family. So it would fit up to about, I don't know, 30, 50 to 80 people even. And it would even have their livestock inside this, so they would have cows and sheep inside here as well. Okay, so we've got both roofs on as easy as that. But now all we want to do, which I should have done when building the first part to be honest, is do the overhang. So the overhang is literally just where you take it past the wall. And we're going to even do that down here. So it's going to go down from the wall there. So you've got an overhang here and an overhang coming out from the front. So we're gonna do that all the way around. We're now moving on to the middle. For the middle here, we're starting off with our wooden sloped wall. So we wanna place that going in to the roof this way. So we want one there and one here going inside perfect and then from there we want to add some walls so i'm actually going to start down here i'm going to add some walls in here we want one there one there in fact let's just take it all the way let's just place it all in perfect and then we just keep on going until we get to the top we just want to make a point here a nice pointy roof. So if you've done it right, it should look like this. And we want to do the exact same thing on the other side. So this time I'm going to start off with the walls inside. So now, just like we did with these two roofs, we're going to put this roof in as thatch as well. So we're going to take this all the way across and fill it all in. We're also going to give this one an overhang, so we want to come down by one. So it should look like this now. So the middle roof has an overhang at the bottom, but it doesn't have an overhang coming out this way. I think that's how I want to design this. I'm partially making this up on the spot, partially had a tiny bit planned today for once in my life. The, I think this is the first video where I've pre-planned a little bit and it's probably showing <laughs> because I'm not tearing everything down. So 
be thankful to me. I actually planned this today. And I did re- I mean, Christ, I did- I watched a documentary to build this for you guys. So, with a lot of Viking longhouses, they didn't have the best ventilation, but they did have ventilation. So they didn't have traditional chimneys like you see in a lot of houses. Instead, they might have had holes in the roof, or they would have had vents uh, on the side of their thatch roofs. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm going to make room for some vents. So starting one down from the top, we're going to start to take away some of this thatch roofing. So I want to keep the one on the left. So if I point my gun, just so you can see where I'm pointing. So we're going to keep this one and we're keeping this one. But all the ones in between are going. So I'm going to go in and pick these up. So pick one up. So you should have a nice gap like this. And we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Perfect. Now we want to grab a wood quarter ceiling and we're going to put this across the top here. So starting from here, we're going to go out by two, three. So three going out. We're going to go all the way across doing this. And repeat on the other side. Now if you come on inside the main building here, we are going to start doing some pillars. So from in the building, we want to add some wooden pillars going straight up and hitting the middle of the two quarter walls right here. To do this, we need to put a pillar right in the middle of this wooden flooring. So we don't want a wooden, we don't want it to the side here, we don't want it to this side. So if you're struggling here, the best thing to do is actually place a pillar on the middle of the first foundation, just there. And then you should see, yeah, it can snap to this one quite easily. And from there, we can just go straight up to the top. So we go all the way up to the top like that, and we don't do the same again here. Okay, now it's snapping easy. Look at that. So we want one, two, three, four, five down here. And they're all going to go straight up and meet the top there. Look at that. Nice and easy. And we're going to repeat the same thing on the opposite side. So now we're going to add a little bit of support for this ventilation here by adding some railings here. So we're going to aim for the beam and then just press RB and get that right there. You want it to angle up and touch the edge here. So I'm gonna do that again here. RB, bam. Here, RB, bam. I believe on keyboard to cycle through your snap points, it's Q. I could be wrong, it does tell you, so it will say, ah. Uh, Okay, guys, don't do what I just did, because from my angle, I think Optical Illusion, it looked like it was touching it. It's not touching. Look, they're just sticking out into the air. Look at that. Can you see that? Opt that was literally an Optical Illusion. Okay, let's do that again. Okay, I know what I did wrong. you got to start it from the bottom, like this section of the pillar here. It's kind of the top of that pillar and the bottom of this pillar. You want to start it right there. And then you just want to cycle RB until you get the one that really goes really high. That one. That's the one you want. It goes super high. There's two versions of the angle. There's one that sort of slopes a little bit up, like that one. You don't want that one. We want the one that goes all the way up. Is that the one? No, that's not the one. So many snap points. There it is, that one. That's the one you want. It might take you a little while of going through it, but you will get there. So we're going to do the exact same thing on the opposite side. So because this is quite a big long house, I think I don't just want the vents, I want some additional ventilation, which I'm going to get with a raised roof in the middle, so another section that comes up. So how we're going to do this is we're going to use the quarter wall, the wooden quarter wall here. So we're going to use the inside piece 
And we're going to go across one, two, three, four. Oh, I can't do it how I want to do it. Okay. So actually, maybe two on that side, two on that side. Get rid of that one. Get rid of that one. Yeah? No, that doesn't make sense. Two, 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 two. That works better. Okay, so you want to go one, two, miss, miss, one, two, miss, miss, one, two. So there should be a hole here and a hole here. And we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. So one, two, miss, miss, one, two, miss, miss, one, two. Hi guys, it's Editing Lance here. Um, in the video right now, I'm just picking up some thatch roofing that's inside what we just made. I actually go back on myself <laughs> later, so you better as well just ignore this part. I just wanted to show you because in the next part of the video, you'll be like, why is the world where there's no roof in the side there? Well, now you know. Okay, so we took the roof out on the inside, but now we're left with this big old gap on this side of the roof that we don't want. So all we need to do here is get our sloped wooden wall. And if we line it up right, it should let us, I just had it, there we go, put it in here. So I'm gonna flip it so we have the inside part. And then again, just wanna place the next one in here. We get the snap, perfect. For these bits here, I'm just gonna use a quarter wall so should be easy enough to place those in if you hover if you're looking at this wall here it will just let you put it in i'm going to do the exact same thing on this side so now you've basically done the hard work at this stage the rest is going to be nice and easy on the outside because now we're just going to do the details so for the detail side of things, let's start with our wooden pillars. So I'm going to place wooden pillars across all the corners of this build. Once all the corners are put in, I am also going to start putting in across the house. Okay, once you've got all your pillars in, next I think I'm going to add something special down here. So here are the wooden foundations that are showing all the way across. I think I personally want to cover this up with stone walls. Now stone was indeed used in Viking times, not always for longhouses, maybe like a tiny bit would be used in longhouse construction, but it honestly just depended on where they lived. So if there were a lot of rocks in the landscape where they lived and they didn't have access to trees, you'd probably find that some incorporated stone in there, but not often, it just depended on location. So here I want to put in the outside wall. So not this side, but that side. And I want it down there, like so. Uh, it's one of those things that you can barely see, but I think it's going to give it just a nice little contrast to the wood. I quite like it. It's not too overpowering. It's just a little bit that contrast with the wood. Now that the stone walls are in, we're going to move back to the pillars because we're going to place them along the roof. So with this first roof, we're going to place them in four different areas. Place them on the lower level here, the second level, the third level and the fourth level. So I'm going to do that all the way across here. Perfect. And then you just want to do the exact same thing on this side over here. Two, 
So for this middle section, I think I'm just going to put it in a couple of places here. So the first place I'm going to put it is the bottom here, going across. The second place, I think, is just going to be along this section here. And I think, unless do I want it across here as well? I might do. Hmm. Let's put it in. Let's try it. Yeah. Let's go with that. I can always get rid of it if I don't like it, ultimately. So, what we've just done on this side, you've got to do the exact same thing on the other side. So, it's completely symmetrical. Now that the wooden beams are all in, we're going to move on to using the railings. Now the railings are going to have multiple functions here. They're going to act as wooden pieces that hold the thatch together on the roofing. They're also going to act as big wooden beams. Now, unfortunately you can't place the pillars diagonally because I'd rather do that here and have the wooden beam come up here. But because I can't, I'm actually going to use the railings. So let's do that first. So that's what you want. You want the two railings going up and then an extra railing going up that way and an extra railing going up this way. So now this side is done, and that side is done. Now we've just got the middle to worry about. So for the middle here, I think I just want to place it across the bottom here. So one... Whoops, I don't know where that one went. Bam, 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 bam. So we want to go all the way across the bottom. And I think I indeed do want it to go up the top here as well. And we're going to do that nice little cross section here. So we want one going up from this railing, if I can get it. To go like that. So we've got that section there going up. And then the same on this side. We want it to go up all the way to the top. And then we want to do that nice little cross at the top. There we go. So we've got a cross here and a cross up there. Nice. And of course, do it on this side as well. And wow, look at that. I mean, it's starting to look like a Viking longhouse, for sure. I'm really pleased with how this is coming out. So now my creative juices are flowing a little bit, and I'm thinking, I don't want this completely symmetrical. I mean, I want it, definitely I want it authentic to how a Viking longhouse would be, but I'm thinking this side's going to be the entrance, mainly because the sun's hitting it nicely from over there, and it's good for YouTube on this side. <laughs> on this side, though, I think I want the decking to come round a little bit. I think this would be, like, nice to have a little decking area, at least, just so it's not completely symmetrical. So I think that's all I'm thinking for a decking on this side of the build, is just to have it come out by two on this side and two on this side. I think that's gonna work. You know, that, that, that bit's completely up to you, it's just my personal choice to do that. one way to do it so if you can't if you find yourself not able to place a stone wall down here like me just place one above and then if you aim at that one and place it again it should place down here but you can pick this one up 
And that one stays perfect. Then lastly, to finish this decking off, I'm going to add some stairs going up to the foundation. Not that it's that noticeable, but it's just a nice little touch. On this side, I'm going to do more or less the same. I think I'm going to have maybe a way up over here. Now another really fun detail about these Viking houses is they often had these wooden beams that kind of held the house up together. <laughs> they acted like support beams to the house that kind of slanted up and touched the house here and here and here all the way across to help it, I don't know, just support the structure I guess. So we're going to try that now. Now we can't do that with pillars of course but we can do it with the railings. So. I don't know if that's, I hope that, hopefully this is touching the floor. I can't really see. <laughs> the grass is completely in the way, so I just hope that's right. It looks good from here. So let's just do that all the way around. So from here. Okay, those railings are all in. Apart from here, I had a little bit of difficulty with the snapping. So do be warned, if the ground's too high, it might struggle to come down. I don't know what happened there, to be honest. I really struggled, but I gave up on that. <laughs> what I might do instead is just put an awning here or something to cover this up. Or maybe some barrels or storage. We'll see. I'll come back to that a lot later. Now, at this point, the front is pretty much done done there is something else i want to add here so in some of the viking longhouses they would have a tiny vent or a little roof coming out the front here so that's what i want to try and recreate now so i think i'm going to do this with the triangle roof so i'm going to put that in my inventory and also the quarter wall so if i start a quarter wall here dead in the middle like that so I've gone one two dead in the middle and then I take my wood triangle roof and place it yes it does place look at that I'm a genius I'm an actual genius look at this I'm able to place a nice little roof in there might do that on the other side as well let's go do that over here So what's really going to make this look like a Viking house, in my opinion, is putting a nice old shield decoration out the front of the house. So for that, I am going to use a trophy wall mount here as my shield. So I'm thinking maybe around here and one over here, right in the middle if I can eat there nice okay so there's two shields and it would be nice to have two lovely flags coming down either side so i was thinking about how i can do that and i did consider using the multi flags here so i thought i could put it in here perhaps like so or if i like line it up right without the snapping on I could probably put it in and you could have a flag come down or even use the other one which is this one here I place that nicely in like so it almost works and I'm almost tempted to do that honestly okay so that side will try that design out on this side let me get rid of this one 
we'll try out my other method, which is canvases. Now, with the canvases, I'm going to start one on the left here. And then I'm going to enable snapping. And go all the way down. And then I'm going to disable snapping. Go to the right and line it up nicely. Yes. And then go all the way down. Not quite symmetrical, but you get the idea. You get what I'm going for. I might even take it down further. Like so. So that I would colour and make it look like a flag. The right still looks good, but I think I prefer the left, especially when it's coloured. I think that's going to look better. Now, it's up to you which one you use, but there's two options for you, honestly. So I think they're both good options. So for my colours, I'm going to use Moonstone Blue for the canvases and the wall mount. I'm also going to use white on every other canvas to give it this nice kind of pattern effect if I come out. Yeah. That looks good. So coming on through the front of the house here, we enter the first big room. Now I am silly, I blocked this completely off. It's not meant to be like this. <laughs> Let's put some doors in. So I'm gonna have two doors here, let's see. Uh, this door, yep, yeah. one, two. That takes us into the main room here and do the same over here just so you have access to the whole house. There we go. So you can see how big this build really is. It's massive. So something I'm gonna change really quickly before we move on to the interior is the roof. Now I don't really like the gaps in the roof, all the vents, so I'm gonna cover it up. Another thing I've just noticed is that there are floating pillars up on the walls here. So I'm just going to get some pillars and bring them all the way down. So for the first section of the longhouse, I'm thinking beds, seating area over here, some tapestry on the walls, maybe some shields. In the middle zone is going to be the main social area where everyone likes to eat and feast. A lot of storage, maybe a little bit of a workshop in here as well. I'll think about that as well. Over here, I'm not 100% sure yet, but I'm thinking we could have some livestock in here for fun. Uh, and we've also got this lovely decking that goes out here. So yeah, a lot to think about, but let's go start over here first. So I'm going to start off with some quarter walls. Now I'm thinking this might be a good place to put some raised beds up here. This was something that they did do back in the Viking times in the longhouses. They had their beds raised off the floor and they'd perhaps have some storage or other such things underneath. That looks great. And let's just put a ceiling on top. If I can get it, there we go. Lovely. And then we'd have our beds up here as well. So let's think about this. Get a bed in here. So I did decide to do the underbed storage idea, and what I did is just take out the quarter walls, put in the railings on the top here and on the bottom, and you get this lovely little sort of pattern effect. Okay, I think this room is pretty much done. There may be some final touches later, maybe some stuff on the table. Now, the main area. This one will be a bit harder, so I'm going to have to think. But I do know I want some tables in the middle here. That is definitely going to be a feature, so I'm going to do that now.
Hello, it's Editing Lance here. Just wanted to make sure you guys are okay. You okay? Oh, I'm good. Good, I'm glad you're okay. I'm okay. Um, just to let you know, I never come back to you <laughs> during this. I got so carried away building this that I just forgot to talk. So I'm here talking now. Just to let you know that um, it, you should be able to follow this. It's all, it's all in fast mode. And uh, yeah, good luck. I think I think it's easy to follow. Okay, now that this room is done, we're going to move on to the last room, which is this one. And I'm thinking of putting some livestock in here, maybe some dodos. Maybe it's like a, you know, butchery where you carve your, your dodos up. I'm not really sure yet. I'll tell you what, I'll just go into super fast build mode and I'll just work it out. Okay, so the purpose of this room, I guess, is that you keep your livestock in here, maybe your chickens and your sheep, and you slaughter them on this table. That's what my thinking is. Now that the inside is pretty much done, I've returned to the outside to that area. Do you remember that area that I couldn't work, like I couldn't get the railings in? Well, right here, I'm gonna try and put in like a little canopy or something coming out. So I need to try and design that now. Okay, so I managed to figure out a design for the awning. I did have to take out two thatched roofs here, and that's what made it work for me. So I used two wooden ramps here, and then the quarter ceiling tiles. And then down here, I just used the railings going up with the ramp on each side, up there and up here. And then under here, I just put some thatch foundation in, and some beer barrels on top for storage. So we're kind of nearly done here. I just need to add in some windows. I for completely forgot about. So I'm going to add in some windows here. Okay, guys. I feel like this main building is pretty much done. Which is what the tutorial is all about. So that's good. I've done that. But I think what I'm going to do now is go away, finesse some details, and maybe add some little additional extras around as a surprise. And then I'll see you after the glamour shots. And don't worry, any additional extras that I do, I will take you through all of it.
Welcome back fellow Vikings. I am completely done on this build now. I need to park my ship. Park it perfectly. Park it perfectly. That is in a rock. That is inside a rock. Okay. Perfect enough. Um, <laughs> so I have done some extras on the longhouse. Nothing too much. Mainly to the around the exterior. So not to the longhouse itself, honestly. Um, I will take you through everything, so do not worry. Let's start. So, the only extras I've actually done to this longhouse on the outside is just adding some crop pots with some citronel just for decoration, which is a nice little touch. Over here, we have our lovely garden out in the open. I think this is a really nice thing to do. Just have some crop pots out in the open, have a little garden and a little shed here. I think this works really well. I incorporated it with the bushes that naturally occur and took out all the bushes around so you got this nice little patch here. So with this little hut, this is something that the Vikings actually did. They put tuft on their roofs. So to make this, I just put thatch roofing on and what did, color did I use? I used a color called filth coloring for the main green color, this green color here. And then I used like an off green color here which works really well. All I had to do to make this was put down some thatch and then put down some corner wall tiles, the triangle ones, and then you just put your thatch roof on top and take it into the ground. Um, and then of course I just did the railing like normal going up and up. So that's that. Who's a good boy? You're a good boy. So with the other side here, if we go up the decking, um, I've got a little bit of decoration down. I've got some storage boxes here, some benches with a cook pot, uh, some more storage. But on the front here, I did try out the other flag method. So up to you which one you prefer. This one also works quite well. This is just the standard flag, but I painted blue and white and blue stripes down it. In fact, I didn't paint the middle. I just painted blue on either side of the flag. And that's the effect you get. I think that also works quite well. So you decide canvas or flag. Vote now. <laughs> I, I like both. I, I don't have an issue with both, honestly. I think they both have their charm. So over here we have our little Ecris pen. We've just got some wood foundation going across the floor. That was really hard to see because of the grass, so that took me ages to get like a nice circle. And then you just put your wooden railing on top. That's a really nice way to do it. And when I say wood foundation, I of course actually mean... Do I have it in this? Wood fence foundation. That's what I mean. If I put it in my inventory, you can see. So yeah, you can barely see it. Look, you can barely see it. If I go to an area that you can see it, here it is. So you place it down. Bam. And then it just snaps to the last one, and you can kind of go around in a circle with it. So I just went that round in a whole circle with this, like this. That's all I did. And then you just put your railing on top. So that's how you do that. Nice little feature. To the right of the graveyard here, we have two huts. And these are slightly bigger than the other hut we made uh, by the garden. They've got two walls, and then they've got the corner wall here corner wall up there and a corner wall here and then of course you just put your thatch across really simple house honestly um and your railing up with the little cross at the top and of course i did also did the filth coloring here to make it look like it was grass they used for the roof works really well and i literally just did the same again here but i added a window this time so yeah very nice little tiny houses uh you could put bedding in here Vikings actually used to use these outhouses as workshops, etc. And everyone really just lived in the main longhouse. So, just a little fun fact for you. So, if we go through the entrance at the front of the house, we enter the main living quarters here, where most of the family live. They've got lovely tapestry on the wall. That, uh, well, I put paintings on, on the tapestries. They look really awesome, honestly. I don't think the Vikings had that good a painting job on their tapestries but you know I'm just built different we got our cooking pot in the middle and our lovely bedding at the top where everyone just snuggles in together because it's very cold at night 
and our storage below with the lovely railings going top to toe, top to toe, that give that nice pattern that I really like. Coming from the front living quarters here, we can enter the main hub area where people come to eat, feast, drink, do research, put storage in. Uh, you got your smithing tables over here, your forges right here, you got your war drums in the corner if you want a little jam. And of course, whoever's the tribe leader can have the front row seat at the table. Look at that. And look at those mounts behind me. Obviously, <laughs> I've used boss mounts. Uh, very hard to get because you've got to destroy a boss. But you could easily put a uh, T-Rex, Alpha T-Rex skull in these and paint them different colours for fun. I mean, that's, I didn't realise when you paint the wall mount behind, it automatically paints the head that you put on it. So, yeah, many options there. Coming up the stairs here, we have our first level that just has some storage at the moment. And if we climb the ladder up from that level, we come to the second floor. That just mainly is used for storage and a bit of bedding up here. Look at that. So if we come around the wall here, we can get to the other side of the building, which is the livestock room slash butchery. <laughs> slash butchery. So the idea is that you keep all your animals in here, your little animals that you want to kill for meat. So I've got my dodos in some cages. Some are just roaming free, having a good life. But here is where you butcher <laughs> the dodos in front of their friends so they can watch. And then I've got a little upstairs area again where you can put some beds down. I've just put some storage down here in a campfire randomly. So yeah, that's this room. Okay guys, I think that's the build for the day. Don't forget to comment below what you want me to build next, smash the like button, and also subscribe if you would like. It's free and you'll be helping me out a ton. Really appreciate you guys and love you guys to death. I'll see you in the next video.